Christine Felstead. Welcome to Christine Felstead's Yoga for Runners, The Essentials. I was a runner for 20 years. I loved to run and I did very little else to balance out my body. Then one day it occurred to me that I was able to run for the bus, but I was having great difficulty bending over to tie my shoes from the stiffness and aches and pains that I was experiencing. That was what led to my very first yoga class many years ago. After practicing yoga for some time, I started to notice some deep changes in my body. Eventually, this inspired me to become a yoga instructor. I was keen to share these profound changes with my fellow runners. That's when I put together my very first Yoga for Runners workshop in the year 2000. Since then, I've had the privilege of introducing thousands of runners to the benefits of yoga. Why are yoga and running such a perfect complement? Runners love to run, and so they should. Running is a fabulous sport. However, as many of us know from firsthand experience, running does have its side effects, tightening of muscles and joints. Yoga helps to offset the negative effects of running and will help to restore the body to balance and symmetry. Using yoga to cross train will not only make you a better runner, it will reduce your risk of injury, it will cut down your recovery times after racing, you'll just feel better. So runners may initially be drawn to yoga for the stretching and there's no doubt that yoga does improve your flexibility, but yoga does so much more. Yoga will strengthen your body by working muscles that you don't use when you run. Yoga will improve your breathing, making you more aware of your breath and actually improve your VO2 max. And yoga will help to deepen your mind-body connection. The program I've laid out in this DVD is appropriate for those new to yoga as well as those that have some yoga experience. I've broken the program down into four different segments, each segment focusing on a key part of the body for runners. The segments include the foundation, lower back, hamstrings, and hips. I am confident that my yoga program will make you a better runner and a stronger runner and a healthier runner so that you can run for as long as you want to. Let yoga help to keep you healthy and on the road. Namaste. The poses in this first segment I'm calling foundation poses. That's because these poses are the foundation for many yoga poses, but not just that, they are also the foundation for many of the simple daily tasks we do, like walking, sitting, standing, and running. Even these simple poses done daily will make a huge difference in your alignment. I would like to introduce you to the runners that will be practicing with me, Jillian, Kate, and Scott. At times they will be demonstrating variations of the poses described. An important part of yoga is mindful breathing. Coordinating the physical aspects of yoga with the breath helps us relax into the poses. Practicing conscious breathing helps us to center and clear our minds and stay in tune with our body's responses. We will start our practice with some conscious breathing. Sit in a comfortable cross-legged position on a pillow or yoga block. Feel both sitting bones evenly grounded. Relax the inner thighs. Position your shoulders over your hips and draw your shoulder blades down your back. Broaden through the collarbones and lengthen the back of the neck. Lengthen your spine by lifting up from your lower belly and base of the spine. Close your eyes and begin to breathe, inhaling and exhaling through the nose. Stay with your normal breath, but draw attention to it, how it feels, how it sounds, the depth and evenness. Soften the jaw, throat, relax the tongue. I will lead you through a breathing sequence. Exhale, extending it for as long as possible until you feel that you have emptied your lungs completely. Inhale, one, two, three, four, exhale, one, two, three, four, inhale, one, two, three, four, exhale, one, two, three, four, inhale, one, two, three, four, exhale, one, two, three, four, inhale, one, two, three, four, exhale, one, two, three, four, 
Inhale, one, two, three, four. Exhale, one, two, three, four. We will try to find the same breath in our yoga poses. Open your eyes and bring yourself to standing. We will prepare for a pose called equal standing. Stand with your feet together, inner edges of the big toes touching. Lift and spread the toes, pressing the big toes towards each other and the other toes fanned outward. Contract the quadriceps so you feel the flesh of the fronts of the thighs lifting. Let the hips rest in neutral with the tailbone and pubic bone descending. You should feel grounded and stable. From this stability, start to lengthen the spine from the base. As you lengthen, draw your belly upwards, front ribs in, and lengthen front, sides, and back of the body. Draw your shoulder blades down your back, broadening through the collarbones, and lengthening the back of the neck. Lift through the crown of the head. We will hold this pose for a few breaths, letting the feeling of symmetry settle into your body. Equal standing is a very powerful yoga pose because it teaches the body to stand in symmetry. In equal standing, the weight-bearing joints are in alignment. Shoulders over the hips, hips over the knees, and knees over the ankles. I recommend to my students that they try to find this kind of alignment anytime they find themselves standing and waiting. Many running injuries or related aches and pains can be caused by muscular imbalances and poor posture is a contributing factor. This simple pose goes a long way to restore balance to the body and modify deeply rooted postural habits that may be less than perfect. For athletes, good posture increases efficiency by improving oxygen intake. When the breastbone is lifted and the chest is open, you are able to take fuller and deeper breaths. Take a few more breaths and feel the full depth of your breath as your chest expands. Now we will sit cross-legged. If your hips are tight, sitting cross-legged whenever you can is a simple way to start creating greater range of motion in the hip joints. Sit with your legs crossed at the ankles. Tilt the pelvis forward slightly and lift the belly. If your hips want to tilt backwards, sit on a yoga block as Scott is doing. This will help tilt your hips forward and make it more comfortable. Ground both sitting bones evenly. Lengthen the spine, keeping your shoulders in line with your hips. Relax the inner thighs. When sitting this way, alternate the forward leg for an equal length of time. Whenever you can, opt to sit this way rather than on a chair. Simple cross-legged sitting is a great way to work some hip stretching into your daily life. When you are doing this pose as part of your yoga practice, you can fold forward and rest your forehead on a block for a more relaxing result. Take full deep breaths and be aware of the sensations you may be experiencing. Direct the breath to any tight or restricted areas of your body. Swing your legs around behind you and come to your hands and knees. We will prepare for Hero Pose. For extra comfort, place a blanket beneath the knees and shins. Bring your knees and big toes together. Your heels will likely splay to the side, but try to lift your outer ankles in so that you create a more even stretch on the inner and outer foot. Rest your sitting bones on your heels. Sit upright, lengthen the spine, lift through the crown of the head. Breathe deeply, stay aware and in tune with your body. This pose is not immediately comfortable for many people, but we can modify it to make it so. If there is discomfort at the tops of the feet, roll a blanket as thick as necessary and place it under the instep of your feet. If there is discomfort at the knees or quadriceps, place a folded blanket between the sitting bones and the heels. You can use both these modifications if you need to, as Kate is doing. Use as much height as you need until you are comfortable. Hero Pose has tremendous benefits for runners. It strengthens the arches of the feet, 
stretches the ankle joints, stretches the shins, and helps to decompress the knee joint. The key is to work at it slowly, consistently, and to a degree where there is no pain. While this is a very effective pose, it can be intense at the beginning, so let your body get used to it slowly. Hold this pose only for as long as it is comfortable, short periods of time at the start. Do it daily and your body will become used to it. Over time, you will need fewer props and sitting this way will become comfortable. For the next pose, we will bring our mat to a wall and move into a relaxing and rejuvenating pose, legs up the wall. Sit with one hip at the wall, swing your legs up the wall while you take your upper body to the yoga mat. Wiggle yourself towards the wall with the sitting bones at the wall if possible. If this hurts the hamstrings, bend your legs. Otherwise, relax the legs and let them be supported by the wall. Relax your upper body. Close your eyes and breathe. Hold for as long as it is comfortable or as much time as you have available. Stay with your conscious breathing to get the maximum benefit of this pose. Feel the expansion of the rib cage with every inhale and with every exhale, feel the tension release. This is a very effective pose to do whenever your legs are tired, after a vigorous run, a long day at work, or prolonged periods of standing. Legs up the wall restores energy to tired legs and feet and is an effective way to reduce daily stress. Lower back pain and tightness is a common complaint with runners. But most back pain is not just due to running. It often has to do with posture and daily habits. Lengthening the spinal muscles help to relieve back pain. The poses in this segment stretch out the spinal muscles and ease compression and tightness often associated with lower back discomfort. And for many runners, that's all it takes to get rid of chronic discomfort. We will start with the cat-dog stretch. This simple stretch is a great way to limber up the spine. Start on your hands and knees. Place your hands under the shoulders with fingers spread and your hips over the knees. Rest the tops of your feet on the floor. Start with the spine in a neutral position. Inhale. Long, slow exhale. Lift your belly button towards your lower back as you lift your upper back and breastbone towards the ceiling. Relax your shoulders and let your head hang. Long, slow inhale. Release the lower back as you slide the breastbone forward. Lift your sitting bones, raise your chin, and look up. Now we will alternate these movements with the breath. Exhale, lift the belly round the back. Inhale, lift the sitting bones and the chest. Let the movement follow the breath. Exhale, make your belly concave as you round your back. Inhale, lift the sitting bones and the chest. Exhale, lift your spine. Inhale, lift the chest and drop your lower back. Exhale, lift the belly round the back. Inhale, lift the sitting bones and the chest. Do one more to your own rhythm. Let the spine rest in neutral. Stay on your hands and knees and we'll move to child's pose. Keep your knees at hip distance, but bring your big toes together. Press your hands into the floor and move your hips towards your heels. Let your sitting bones rest on your heels and your torso rest on your thighs. Rest your forehead on the floor. Your arms can either rest in front of you or you can wrap them around your outer thighs. Breathe deeply so that you feel the breath in your lower back. 
Relax your shoulders and neck. Child's Pose is a restorative pose and a nice way to stretch out the spine after a run or first thing in the morning. This pose relieves stress and strain and is very calming for the central nervous system. For the next pose, we will move our mats to a wall. Lie down on your mat with your legs straight and the soles of your feet pressing into the wall. Bring the inner edges of your feet together. Press out to the soles of your feet and rest your arms straight by your side with your palms facing your body. Press the tops of your thighs towards the floor and your feet into the wall as you lengthen your entire body. Press even and equal pressure through the feet. Reach your fingertips towards your feet and let your shoulder blades press down your back. Hold and breathe deeply. This pose is like equal standing where the body is symmetrical. Make this an active pose by pressing the feet into the wall as you continue to lengthen the spine and press your shoulders down. Let your breath be even and steady. From this pose, we will move into a spinal twist. Take your arms out to your side, shoulder height, palms down. Press your thighs to your chest and keeping your knees together, roll them to the right, towards the floor and your right elbow. Press the left shoulder to the floor. Take your gaze to the left. Hold for five breaths, breathing into the left ribs. Spinal twists benefit both the soft tissue and the vertebral discs of the spine. They help maintain the normal length and resilience of the spine. A healthy spine is the foundation for a healthy body and is essential for runners. Inhale as you return both knees to center. Keep the knees together and roll them to the left towards the floor and your left elbow. Press the right shoulder to the floor. Take your gaze to the right. Hold for five breaths, breathing into the right ribs. Inhale as you return your knees back to center and your feet to the floor. Roll over to one side and come to standing facing a wall and we will come into downward dog at the wall. Stand in equal standing but with feet hip distance. Place your hands at the wall at hip height and shoulder distance apart. Place your hands on the wall with fingers evenly spread. Walk your feet back until the arms are straight and your upper body is parallel to the floor and your hips are directly over your ankles. As you press the hands into the wall, lengthen through the spine and press your hips as far away from the wall as possible. Draw your belly in to support your lower back. Reach the crown of your head towards the wall and your hips away from the wall. Keep the legs straight with quadriceps contracted. If it is painful in the hamstrings or the lower back, bend your legs a little. Breathe deeply, feeling the chest expand with every inhale. Activate the pose through the grounding of the feet and hands and the extension of the spine. 
Keep your belly lifted to prevent the lower back from caving. To come out of the pose, press your hands into the wall, step your feet forward and return to equal standing. We will come into the full downward facing dog pose. Come onto your hands and knees with your hands beneath the shoulders and knees beneath the hips. With straight arms, spread the palms, press the roots of the fingers firmly to the ground and reach out through the fingertips. Keep your inner hand grounded, paying particular attention to the base of the index finger and thumb. Curl the toes under and press the hips up and back. Keep the legs bent to start and actively press the hands as you press the hips away from the hands and towards the ceiling. Straighten the legs by pressing the thigh bones, shin bones and heels back. It's okay if the heels do not touch the floor. Draw your belly in and up and press your shoulder blades towards your tailbone. Let your head relax. Keep the breath steady and even. We will take a rest in child's pose and repeat. Drop your knees to the floor and bring your big toes together. Release your hips to your heels, head to the floor. Relax your shoulders and arms. Breathe. We will prepare for downward dog again. Press your hands into the floor, pressing your inner and outer hands evenly. Curl your toes under and lift the hips up and back. Press the hips as far away from the hands as possible and then straighten the legs by pressing the thigh and shin bones back. Press your heels towards the floor. Breathe deeply, feeling the breath in the lower back. Let go of any tension in the neck. I consider Downward Dog to be one of the best yoga poses for runners. While a key of this pose is stretching the spine, at the same time you are stretching the hamstrings, calves, Achilles, and using upper body strength. While it may not be immediately comfortable, the payoff is worth the work. Hold for five breaths or longer if you wish. To come out of the pose, look to your hands, Lift your hips and step both feet to the hands. Return to equal standing. Tight hamstrings can lead to back pain. It can contribute to misalignment in the hips and cause discomfort in simple daily tasks like picking something up from the floor. For runners, hamstring tightness often leads to frustrating injuries that can sideline your running. Regular hamstring stretching will lengthen your hamstrings, and longer hamstrings mean your stride will lengthen, feel easier, and improve your overall performance. We will start in a neutral seated pose, staff pose. Have belt by your side. Extend your legs straight out in front of you. Sit upright and let your hands rest on the floor by your hips. If you have difficulty sitting with your pelvis upright, sit up on a block as Scott is doing. Press down evenly through both sitting bones, lift from the lower belly and base of your spine and reach through to the crown of your head to fully lengthen your spine. Keep your shoulders in line with your hips and your head in line with your shoulders. Lift your breastbone and drop your shoulders. Flex your feet and spread your toes. Actively reach out through the soles of your feet. Staff pose is a good pose to practice proper alignment when seated. It strengthens the front and back of the body. This is also a good pose for observing the breath. Feel the effects of deep breathing in the rib cage. Try to keep your mind from wandering. Stay with the sensations you are experiencing and keep breathing. 
Now we will move into a seated forward bend. Place a yoga belt at the base of your toes and sit upright in staff pose. As we start to move forward, we will move from the hips, not the waist. Inhale, lift and lengthen the front torso and move forward from the hips without letting your back round. Keep your spine long, breastbone lifted and shoulder blades pressing down your back. Keep your legs actively pressing forward through your flexed feet. If your hands reach your feet without rounding your back, you can take your hands to your feet rather than use a belt. Breathe in the pose to continue to lengthen the front of the body. Relax your shoulders. We will hold for five breaths. Resist the temptation to go further forward if your back rounds. Only go as far as you can with the long spine and long front torso. Use the breath to help elongate the spine. To come up, first lift the torso, reach through the breastbone, and return to staff pose. The next pose is a reclining hamstring stretch. Keep your belt by your side. Lie on your back with your feet together and your legs fully extended. Flex your feet. Bend your right knee towards your chest and place the belt around the ball of your right foot. Straighten the leg and raise it towards you only as far as you can without bending the knee. Lengthen the back of the leg from the sitting bone to the heel while pressing upwards through the big toe joint. Press the front of the left thigh heavily to the ground while keeping the left foot flexed. Relax your shoulders, broaden through the collarbones and relax your jaw and neck. If you have difficulty extending through the left leg, you can keep it bent as Scott is doing. We will hold for five breaths. This pose is the hamstring stretch that I most often recommend to runners. It is a good pose to hold for longer periods of time because it is not weight bearing. While this pose primarily stretches the hamstrings, many runners may also feel the stretch in their calves. Release your right leg to the floor. Bring your feet together and feel how energized your right leg is. Now we will repeat on the other side. Bend your left knee towards your chest and place the belt around the base of your left foot. Straighten the leg and raise it towards you only as far as you can without bending the knee. Lengthen the back of the leg from the sitting bone to the heel while pressing upwards through the big toe joint. Press the front of the right thigh heavily to the floor and keep the right foot flexed. Relax the shoulders, broadening through the collarbones, and relax the jaw and neck. We will hold for five breaths. With every breath, keep extending through the grounded leg. Breathe into the back of both legs. Release your left leg to the floor and bring both feet together. Roll to one side and come to standing and we will come into a standing forward bend. Start in equal standing with your feet at hip distance. Press down through the soles of your feet and contract your quadriceps. Place your hands on your hips and lengthen your spine. Start to fold forward, moving from the hip joint. Keep your front torso long and breastbone pressing forward. Go only as far as you can without letting your back round. Engage the abdominal muscles to support the lower back. If there is any discomfort in your lower back, bend at your knees slightly. Otherwise, keep the legs straight with firm quadriceps. Breathe into the hamstrings and into the lower back. Fold only as far as you can, maintaining a long straight spine and let your hands rest at that point. Standing forward bending primarily stretches the hamstrings, but many runners also feel it in their calves. Hold for five breaths.
To come out of the pose, place your hands on your hips, inhale, lift through the breastbone, and come to an upright position. Return to equal standing. We will move into a wide-legged forward bend. Step your feet about five feet apart so that you are lengthwise on your mat. Rest your hands on your hips. Turn your toes in slightly so that the outer edges of your feet are parallel. Press your big toe joints into the floor and lift your inner ankles. Contract the quadriceps and inner thighs so that you feel a lifting action from the inner knees to the inner groins. Lengthen your spine, lift the breastbone as you fold forward, moving from the hip joint. As the torso becomes parallel to the floor, place your fingertips on the floor directly below your shoulders. Keep your legs straight and use blocks if you need to, as Scott is doing. Lengthen the front torso away from the hips. Keep your head in line with your shoulders. Keep the back of the neck long and gaze soft. Engage the abdominal muscles to support the lower back. If there is any discomfort in the lower back, bend your knees slightly. Hold and breathe. If you are able to go deeper, continue to move forward from your hips and walk your hands back. Widen the shoulder blades across the back and draw your shoulders away from your ears. Do this only if you can keep your legs and your spine straight. Breathe length into your hamstrings and with every exhale, release tension. Keep your breath even and your gaze soft. To come out of the pose, place your hands at your hips, inhale, press through your feet and lift yourself to upright. Return to equal standing. Runners often complain of tightness or discomfort in the hips. While running does tighten the lateral rotators and hip flexors, the number of hours many of us spend sitting further hampers our hip flexibility. We use the hips mostly in one plane when walking, sitting, standing, or running, and this keeps our hips from the rotation, flexion, and extension that they need to be agile. After a series of hip opening poses, runners will often feel lighter on their feet and less constrained in the hips. So while hip opening can be challenging, it is also very satisfying work for runners as the results can be felt quickly. We will start in downward dog and use it as a launching point for the next few poses. Start on your hands and knees with hands shoulder distance and knees beneath the hips. With arms straight, spread the palms, press the roots of your fingers firmly to the ground and reach out through the fingertips. Curl the toes under and press the hips up and back. Lengthen the spine and straighten the legs. Hold for a few breaths. From here, we will move into a lunge. Lunges are a good way to stretch the hip flexors. Step your right foot to your right hand. Drop your left knee to the floor. Keep your hands on the floor by the front foot. Maintain heel toe alignment in your right foot and keep the leg at 90 degrees. Keep your knee over your ankle. Curl the toes of the left foot under and straighten the leg. Lift the back of the knee towards the ceiling and press back through the heel. Come onto the fingertips and lift the chest to elongate the spine. We will hold for five breaths. Keep the back leg straight and as you press back through the heel, feel the stretch in the calf and Achilles. Keep the chest lifted. Breathe evenly. Breathe into the front of the left thigh. Press the palms of your hands to the floor, lift your hips and step the right foot back to return to downward dog. Step your left foot to your left hand. Drop your right knee to the floor. Keep your hands on the floor by the front foot. Maintain heel toe alignment in your right foot and keep the leg at 90 degrees. Keep your knee over your ankle. Curl the toes of the right foot under and straighten the right leg. Lift the back of the knee towards the ceiling and press back through the heel. 
Press into the fingers and lift the chest to elongate the spine. We will hold for five breaths. Keep the back leg straight and as you press back through the heel, feel the stretch in the calf and Achilles. Keep the chest lifted. Breathe evenly and breathe into the front of the right thigh. Press palms of the hands to the floor, lift the hips and step the left foot back. Return to downward dog. Step your right foot to your right hand and drop your left knee to the floor. Maintain heel toe alignment in your right foot and keep the leg at 90 degrees. Don't let the knee move beyond your ankle. Curl the toes of your left foot under and straighten the leg. Press into the front foot and come to an upright position. Rest your hands at your thigh. Press the tailbone towards the floor and lift the hip bones and belly up. Fully straighten the back leg. Lift the breastbone as you extend your arms overhead. Fully straighten the arms to help lengthen the side body from waist to fingertips. Press the shoulder blades down your back. We will hold for five breaths, but you can move into child's pose at any time. Feel the chest expand with every inhale. Keep the front leg bent and the back leg straight. Breathe deeply and evenly. Keep your gaze soft and your breath even. Release your arms and place your hands by the front foot. Lift from your hips and step the right foot back. Return to downward dog. Step your left foot to your left hand and drop your right knee to the floor. Maintain heel toe alignment in your left foot and keep the leg at 90 degrees. Keep your knee over your ankle. Curl the toes of the right foot under and straighten the leg. Press into the front foot and come to an upright position, resting your hands at your front thigh. Press the tailbone towards the floor and lift the hip bones and belly up. Fully straighten the back leg. Lift the breastbone as you extend your arms overhead. Fully straighten the arms to help lengthen the spine. Press the shoulder blades down your back. We will hold for five breaths, but you can move into child's pose at any time. Breathe deeply, feeling the spine lengthen with every inhale. Keep pressing the right heel back. Keep the front leg bent and the back leg straight. Breathe deeply, evenly, and keep your gaze soft. Release your arms and place your hands by the front foot. Lift from your hips and step the left foot back. Return to downward dog. We will prepare for Pigeon Pose, a favorite amongst runners because it relieves tightness deep in the hip joint. From Downward Dog, slide your right knee to the right wrist. Move your foot and shin to the left and try to keep the knee and hip in line. Slide the left leg back as far as you can and drop the right hip to the floor. If taking the hip to the floor feels awkward, place a block underneath the hip as Scott is doing. The hips do not have to be square, but the right hip should be grounded. Fold forward and rest your forehead on your hands. We'll hold for five breaths. Concentrate on breathing into the right hip. With every exhale, let any stored tightness release. Place your hands on the floor in front of the right leg, curl the toes under on the back foot, lift from the hips and take the right leg back. Return to Downward Dog. 
Now we'll switch sides. Slide the left knee to the left wrist, move the foot and shin to the left and try to keep knee and hip in line. Slide the right leg back as far as you can and drop the left hip to the floor. If taking the hip to the floor feels awkward, place a block underneath the hip. The hips do not have to be square, but the right hip should be grounded. Fold forward and rest your forehead on your hands. We'll hold for five breaths. Use the breath to release tightness. When we work on the hips, it is very common to feel one side differently than the other. This is one place where imbalances in the body are easily felt. Over time, the differences will reduce. A good idea is to hold the pose longer on your tighter side. Place your hands on the floor in front of the left leg, curl the toes on the back foot under, lift from the hips and take the left leg back. Return to Downward Dog. From Downward Dog, step both feet to the front of your mat and come to equal standing. Step your feet about five feet apart so you are lengthwise on your mat. Raise the arms to shoulder height, palms down. Press your shoulder blades down your back. Turn your left foot in slightly and your right foot out to 90 degrees. Align the feet so that the center of the front heel is in line with the center of the back arch. Bend your right leg and rest your right elbow on your knee. Keep your knee in line with the ankle and bring the thighs close to parallel to the floor as possible. Press the left shoulder blade down your back as you extend the arm over the head, palm facing down. Reach through the fingertips. Keep the outer edge of the left foot grounded and inner thigh lifting. Roll your right ribs forward and left ribs towards the ceiling to open the chest. Stretch from the heel through to the fingertips, lengthening the entire left side of the body. Actively press the right sitting bone forward and the left hip back. Be mindful that the knee stays directly over at the ankle. Gaze straight ahead and keep your breathing deep and even. To come up, push both feet strongly into the floor and reach the left arm toward the ceiling to return to standing. We will repeat on the other side. Turn the right foot in slightly and the left foot to 90 degrees. Bend your left leg and rest your elbow on your knee. Keep your knee over the ankle and bring the thighs close to parallel to the floor as possible. Press the right shoulder blade down your back as you extend the arm over the head, palm facing down. Reach through the fingertips. Keep the outer edge of the right foot grounded and the inner thigh lifted. Roll your left ribs forward and your right ribs towards the ceiling to open the chest. Stretch from the heel through to the fingertips, lengthening the entire right side of the body. Actively press the left sitting bone forward and the right hip back. Be mindful that the knee stays directly over the ankle. Gaze straight ahead and keep your breathing deep and even. We will hold for five breaths. To come up, push both feet strongly into the floor and reach the right arm to come upright. Return to equal standing. Our next pose is a seated hip opener. Lie on your back with legs bent. Cross the right thigh over the left so there is no space between the thighs. 
Reach your arms around both thighs and draw the thighs towards the chest. Flex your feet. Keep your hips on the floor. Relax your shoulders. We will hold for five breaths. Breathe into the hips to release tightness. Relax your shoulders. Uncross the legs. Cross the left thigh over the right. Reach your arms around both thighs and draw the thighs towards the chest. Flex your feet. Keep your hips on the floor. Relax your shoulders. Hold for five breaths. Uncross your thighs and place your feet on the floor with your legs bent and prepare for bound angle pose. Bring the soles of the feet together and let the knees drop to the sides. Make sure that the feet are even with one another and centered at the hips. Bring your feet as close to your hips as possible. If one knee is higher than the other, try to even them as best you can. Let your inner thighs and groins soften. If there is any pinching or discomfort in the knees, move your feet further away from your body. If your inner thighs are uncomfortable, place blocks between the thighs for support, as Scott is doing. We will hold this pose for five breaths, but it can be held longer if you like. Bound angle pose is excellent for the hip region. It stretches the inner thighs, groins, and increases the mobility of the hips. Breathe deeply into the hips and release tension and holding in the inner groins. Slowly bring your knees together and straighten your legs. The last pose is a relaxation pose and is an important part of our yoga practice. As busy as your life may be, don't skip this pose even if you are doing a short yoga practice. Think of it as a gift to yourself. This restorative part of your yoga practice will rejuvenate and make your yoga practice complete. It is important to make yourself comfortable in this pose. Lie down, lift your hips slightly, and tuck your tailbone to release your lower back. Roll the shoulder blades down your back, broaden the collarbones, and let the arms rest heavily by your side, palms up. If there is any discomfort, you can modify the pose as Jillian is doing. For a deeper relaxation, you can use an eye pillow as Scott is doing. Let your legs be heavy and let the baby toes release to the floor. Completely let go of all tension and all holding. Allow your body to be supported by the floor and let every muscle fiber relax. Let your breathing return to normal. You can hold this pose for up to 15 minutes or as much time as you have available.
to come out of Shavasana, roll gently onto the right side, resting your head on your arm. Take a couple of breaths here. As you exhale, press your left hand into the floor and lift your torso, letting the head come up last. Return to a comfortable seated position, hands at heart center. Namaste.